this is amazing for the Baltimore Ravens. But what exactly are you referring to? Is it the fact that the Baltimore Ravens started this season 0-2 and, and the outlook on the rest of the year was looking really, really dark, but they turned it around and now they're sitting at 4-2? and two? No, that's not even it. Is it the fact that with that 4-2 and two record, they are atops the AFC North at the present? No, it's not even that. Is it the fact that Lamar Jackson is playing some of his best football that he's ever played? It's not even that. Is it the fact that Zay Flowers, a Baltimore Ravens wide receiver, is number 11th overall in the league when it comes to receiving yards? That's amazing, but that's not even what we're talking about. Is it the fact that Derrick Henry, he is the leading rusher in the entire league, and he's beating the next closest person by almost 100 yards? That's great, but that's not even it. Is it the fact that the Baltimore Ravens are the number one rushing offense in the NFL? That's part of it, but that's not even it. Is it the fact that the Baltimore Ravens are the number one rush defense in the NFL? That's part of it, but that's not even it. Our guy Mark Ingram, who we loved when he was with the Baltimore Ravens, something that he would always say, it's all about the details. And we're going to talk about this rushing game with Derrick Henry and the Baltimore Ravens because one of the details about this rushing game that is just incredible is exactly how dominant it is and can be and has been. Let's talk about it. This article came out from Pro Football Talk uh, today, and it said that the Baltimore Ravens are dominating the run game on both sides of the ball this season like few teams the NFL has ever seen. So that's sounding a little, a little historic. And oh, by the way, and this is no small feat, shout out to Derrick Henry because he won AFC Offensive Player of the Week for not the first, but the second time this season. So more to come? I mean, might as well. But anyway, back to this. It said, the Ravens offense leads the NFL with an average of 205.3 rushing yards per game. So, yeah, that's pretty much on par with the Baltimore Ravens, but it doesn't stop there. It also said, and the Ravens defense leads the NFL by allowing an average of 59 rushing yards per game. That means the Ravens are outrushing their opponents by 146.3 yards per game. No other team in the NFL is even outrushing its opponents by 100 yards per game. But the Ravens, like, that's, that's a lot. They're outrushing their opponents by a little over 146 yards per game. We talked about it's all about the details. What does that mean? Obviously, you got Derrick Henry in the backfield. He adds to what was already a really good running game by the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens have had a great running game for years, but they decided, you know what? We've had a really good running game for years. Let's add an elite player to the mix. Because we have some, we'd had some good players back there. We had a Mark Ingram back there. He was a good player. We had an Alex Collins. Rest in peace, Alex Collins. He was a good player. We had a J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards. Those were good players. But they said, you know, no, 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 no. Let's go from good. And obviously, Keith Mitchell last year, he was a really good player. But they said, let's go from just good or even really good to great, to legendary, to Hall of Fame worthy let's double down on our interest and in derrick henry and let's blow this run game off the top let's do that and the baltimore ravens did just that and it has made all the difference in the world but when you're outrushing your opponents by over 146 yards a game do you know what that does for your team because think about this with the baltimore ravens with a statistic like that which is just insane uh they really remain in control of the game that allows them to control so much of the game and just think about this because it's, it's going to come a point in time where it happened not every game ravens defense is going to be giving up all these crazy yards through the air we, and we, we waiting on it hey ravens if, if this is going to be the week i mean monday night football the world's watching you're going up against mike evans chris Godwin, baker mayfield and all that this will be a perfect week to do it but Imagine when that defense starts catching up to the offense. And think about that, too. As a Baltimore Ravens fan, it is a beautiful thing to be able to consistently say that we trust the offense more than the Because I remember years ago, and I know y'all remember years ago, too, where it would be like we, we, we would look more forward to watching the defense come out on the field than the offense. And those were some, some trying times <laughs> as a Ravens fan. And, but that's what the Ravens' MO was. It was defense, strong defense, and a strong run game. But now things have completely changed 
because Baltimore Ravens, they have a strong offense, but their offense is strong in different ways. They have a very dominant run game, as we see, and as these statistics point out. And it's not just because, remember, numbers don't tell the whole story. They, they never do. You got to take the eye test, too. But when you take the eye test on the Baltimore Ravens run game, you're like, oh, my goodness, this is insane. Because they got a Derrick Henry. And the thing where it's been with Derrick Henry is Ravens have the formula right now to where Derrick Henry can be successful. And it's a simple formula. You got to keep giving him opportunities. Keep feeding him because he always looks like he's about to break one. He always looks like he's so close to breaking one. And then all of a sudden, boom, he'll break it. It happens just about every single game. We saw in this last game uh, against the Commanders, it was just that consistent effort. He kept getting run after run after run after run. Then at the very end, he said, all right. We out of here. Let's go ahead and close this thing out. Against the Bengals, he was trying and he was fighting. And boy, Bengals was shutting him down for them four quarters. But then in that fifth quarter, he broke that 51-yard run, and that was all she wrote. Against the Bills from jump, Derrick Henry let him know, like, hey, I, am, I ain't playing with y'all. 87-yard touchdown run on the very first play of the game. And that was all she wrote. He kept it up throughout the game. Against the Cowboys, he said, oh, y'all ain't want to sign me? I, I live in Texas. I'm from, okay, watch this. I got something for y'all. Ran, ran them out of that stadium. And even in the previous two games where we lost against the Raiders, he really started to find his footing. And against the Chiefs, he started off strong, but then the game kind of got a little out of hand. You know how the Ravens play against the Chiefs. They do things a little bit different. But anyway, Ravens have the formula for Derrick Henry to be successful. But get, it's not just Derrick Henry, though. You got a Justice Hill who's been a contributor in a run game as well. Then you obviously got a Lamar Jackson who's been a contributor in a run game as well. But then it gets even better very, very soon. We don't know exactly when yet. But Keaton Mitchell's still on the way back. <laughs> he ain't even here yet. And Ravens run. Ooh. <laughs> Keaton Mitchell ain't even back. And Ravens run game is like this. And you know Keaton Mitchell. He averaged like 20 yards to carry pretty much. Because that he was crazy with it. So imagine when he gets back to what this run game could look like. But see, it doesn't stop there, though. Because we could hype up the run game. We could give a big ups to the run game, give them the shout out or whatever. But it ain't just been the, it's been the passing game, too. Ravens talked about pick your poison. Harbaugh mentioned it weeks ago. Well, everybody got so upset at him. So we ain't bringing Derrick Henry to have like 30, yard, 30 carries a game. He said, sometimes there's going to be other guys that, that, that's getting it too and making it happen. We want our offense to be just so divert, and it is. The Ravens are like, look, Derrick Henry going to get his. We know that. But Isaiah likely he'll get his too. Zay Flowers, again, the 11th overall in the NFL, the 11th leading receiver when it comes to the yards in the NFL. That Zay Flowers, yeah, him. Rashad Bateman, he been coming on strong. We go to Mark Andrews, Charlie Kohler, Justice Hill. Derrick Hill even helps out in the passing game a bit here and there, too. Nelson Aguilar, he may not get many catches, but when he does get a catch, he said, I'm making the most of this thing. So the Baltimore Ravens, we're talking about their run game, but just their offense overall, the, how strong it is right now, and it's just getting stronger. They're not even at full strength. And in order for all this to be possible, it would not be possible without the offensive line doing what they've been doing. If the offensive line doesn't block, if they don't open up holes for the run game, we ain't even talking about this right now. We ain't even having this conversation. If the offense doesn't allow Lamar Jackson time to do what he does, we ain't even talking about this right now. We're not having a conversation. So give a special shout out to all five of them guys. Ronnie Stanley is back, like all the way back. I was for sure, for certain that with the Baltimore Ravens, they restructured his contract and they put everything in this year. They were like, hey, this is your last year. Next year is a free agent. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's it for him. Ronnie Stanley going to be going. Now it got me rethinking stuff. Got me rethinking stuff. Huge shout out to Pat McCarr. He started off at right tackle. He ain't look so good over there. Moved over to left guard. Okay, been doing this thing ever since. He done had some hiccups here and there, a couple penalties here and there, but overall been doing his thing. Tyler Linderflinder, that old little fumble that he had the other day, that was an anomaly. Stuff like that never happens with him. But he's been doing his thing as well. 
Now he did. I remember in that Cowboys game. Woo, Michael Parsons hit him with a move. But when they lined up Michael, Michael Parsons over the center, oh, he caught Tyler Linderbaum slipping. But besides that, Tyler Linderbaum been doing his thing. Daniel Filele, who everybody was getting on early this season, he's come around a lot, a whole lot. Big shout out to him, too. And then, of course, our rookie at right tackle, Roger Rosengarten. It's been up and down with him. He's had some great moments. He's had some rough moments as well. But he's coming on strong, too. So special shout out to them. But also, got to give a shout out to the extra offensive lineman. And not just Josh Jones. Shout out to him, too. Not just Andrew Voorhees. Shout out to him, too. Because he was part of the lineup before he got hurt. But Pat Ricard. My goodness, Pat Ricard has been amazing. I remember when we first brought in uh, Todd Munkin to be the new offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, so many people talked about his two tight end sets, but the lack of his usage when it came to fullbacks. So I was thinking, hmm, I wonder if this could actually be Pat Ricard's last year with the Baltimore Ravens last year when they first brought Todd Munkin in. And then I was thinking, ooh, he might get phased out of this offense. Nope. I was completely wrong. Completely wrong. And then this year, they doubled down on Pat Ricard. Said, oh, oh, Derrick Henry coming in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And people talked about it. People talked about, just imagine, Pat Ricard, all of Pat Ricard running at you. So you got to deal with him. But then on top of that, Derrick Henry lined up behind him. <laughs> and we ain't just had to imagine that. We're seeing it. Every single week Because the Baltimore Ravens have been implementing it Every single week We just brought him up But we got to give him a shout out to Todd Munkin Todd Munkin Because this offense The way that this offense has been rolling Todd Munkin He, he had some questionable stuff early on But Todd Munkin for the most part He's been getting it He's been getting it, and that's been very, very beautiful to see. Back to this article. It says, uh, the Ravens are the first team to have at least 150 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown in their first six games of a season since the 1971 Raiders. Here go these Baltimore Ravens just breaking records again. It says, if the Ravens hit 150 rushing yards and a touchdown on Monday night against the Bucks, they'll be the first team in the Super Bowl era to do it in their first seven games of a season. So that's a nice little cool detail. Shout out to Mark Ingram again. He says Baltimore is averaging 5.9 yards per carry this season, which is the best in the NFL by six tenths of a yard. And Baltimore's defense is allowing three yards per carry this season, which is also the best in the NFL by six tenths of a yard. It's all about the details. Now we know John Harbaugh, he is a com he's a comedian, he's a troll, he's uh, all the above. But shout out to John Harbaugh because the other day, a couple days ago, in a presser, he was asked on the possibility of the Ravens drafting Derrick Henry back in 2018. And John Harbaugh said the following, he said he was going to go too high. Everybody knew how high he was going to go and he just wasn't in our place. That's the kind of back you wanted to have, just seemed like one of a kind. John Harbaugh, I got to call you LeBron James on this one because LeBron James, he, when he be in interviews, y'all know LeBron James, he just be saying some stuff, man. Harbaugh, and, and maybe I'll give, give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he just forgot about it or something like that. Or maybe he just tried to erase it out of his memory because Derrick Henry actually went after the Baltimore Ravens drafted and Derrick Henry was a couple of selections after linebacker Kamele Correa. So y'all remember him? Kamele Correa? I, I remember him. I remember him for sure. Because he was one of those Baltimore Ravens experience where they tried to change what he specialized in in college and it just didn't work out. And everybody was looking around like, oh man, why is this guy not working out? Why, why? But yeah, we knew why. Now maybe this time this move will be official because I remember early on this season it was stated by somebody that the Baltimore Ravens were signing him and then it didn't end up happening. But anyway, Jeff Zrebik said uh, the Baltimore Ravens are expected to sign inside linebacker slash special teamer Christian Welch to fill one of their two practice squad openings per sources. Welch initially signed with the Ravens as an undrafted free agent in 2020 and played parts of three seasons with them as a core special teamer. He was recently let go by the Broncos. So remember Christian Welch. I remember him when he was with the Ravens. That, that boy was a hard hitter. But we remember him more recently when he was with the Packers. And in that ugly preseason game where Packers just absolutely destroyed us, um, Christian Welch even got a pick against his former team. I believe it was on Devin Leary, but he got a pick against his former Baltimore Ravens. And he was like, hey, look at me now, baby. But now they're really looking at him because they officially are going to welcome him back very soon. 
Now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature questions from you all. If you would like to be part of it, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Ain't no patrons sending questions today. So that's kind of strange. I guess they're waiting for a little bit later. But anyway, if you are a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash angravenviz. Let's get into the first questions from my guy. Javo. He said, with the trade deadline approaching, what are some realistic players or positions we should target? He said, remember I said realistic mode, so don't say Tyreek Hill, LOL. Hey, you know me. You know me. So, <laughs> hey, anything's possible, so don't forget that. Um, But realistic, I think if we go on wide receiver, I'd probably like DeAndre Hopkins. Maybe Corlin Sutton, depending on how the Broncos do over the next couple of games. Uh, you could think about defensive linemen. I'm trying to think maybe Hassan Reddick. I think that would be a, a realistic one since he's, he's done with the Jets. He's he going to be off of there soon enough. Um, and I think with Hassan Reddick, um, I don't think you would give him a new deal. Uh, but um, you, it will be low risk, high reward. He ain't, he ain't going for no first. He ain't going for no second and third. I think he'll go for like a fourth. Um, but, yeah, so we'll see. Now, with Devontae Adams, I got that one half right. Kinda, because I, I said Devonte Adams was not going for no second. I said he was going for a third and a fifth, but he went for a third. But it's a conditional third. But anyway, we ain't talking about Devonte Adams. Anyway, moving on to his next question. He said, uh, "I heard a subscriber ask about Michael Parsons, and I would love that. Uh, with him and Super Duper Kyle moving all over the place on defense, will give offenses problems. Oh man, that would be a dream. That would be a dream for real. And especially because of the, what you just mentioned, they're moving all over the place. He said, "My question for you is, why do you think Tez is not getting snaps?" Do you think it's because of his performance in practice or just because of the wide receivers ahead of him? Uh, I wouldn't mind a big time. Okay, let me stop right there. Uh, I, I think it's a bit of both. Um, I, I think the Ravens are just like, you ain't showing us enough. You didn't show us enough in training camp to show that like you really deserve uh, playing time here. Um, we don't have a spot for you in this offense, especially with the receivers that are ahead of you. Uh, if you're not shining on special teams, we got Tylen Wallace to do that. We got Deontay Hardy as a return man. Um, so, yeah, and we, like, yeah, I think that's what it's been. Uh, he also said, uh, I wouldn't mind a big-time receiver just as long as they don't bring drama like CD or Diggs, even though I don't see anyone getting in his face like they do Allen and Dak Prescott because Lamar will talk back. <laughs> Look, receivers, it ain't even necessarily them bringing drama. They just want they want their catches. They want to be involved in the offense. So eh, to me, ain't nothing wrong with that. But anyway, he's also said, Bill Belichick said the following on Pat McAfee's show. Number one, the only team that can beat the Ravens is the Ravens. And number two, the Ravens can win it all if they play Raven football and don't beat themselves. <laughs> so I guess I, you, got, you got all of us feeling like geniuses too. If Bill Belichick said that, that's the same thing a lot of us been saying too for years. Play your game. Don't try to play some play your game. And that but now Ravens game is like, hey, we can get it in so many different ways, but play your game. Like if with like the AFC Championship game. That game, not that it would have hurt less, but it would have been better if if Ravens went out playing their style of football. If they went put it all out there and they played their brand of football, it would have been like, okay, cool. We 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 tried it, it ain't work. I right, it it is what it, it still would have hurt. Cause that was like you you were a game of, you were a game away from the Super Bowl. Oh, ooh, and you had a team like that? Oh gosh. And now I don't even want to talk about it no more. He also said, uh Zay Flowers and Bateman can be special. We finally getting a healthy Bateman. Yeah, he's spot on. He said, Mark is slowly getting back as well as Justin Tucker. Yeah, yeah. Mark Andrews and Justin Tucker, they started off a little quiet. Well, Justin Tucker, he wasn't quiet. He was loud with his misses, but yeah, now, now he's back. Uh, he said the defense still needs work, but they did pretty well against the commanders. Uh, they do still need some work. They did. Uh, yeah, not, I wouldn't say pretty well. I wouldn't say pretty well. And he said uh, King and Jackson is a match made in heaven and possibly front runners for MVP. Yeah, we got a special duo back there. Next question came from my guy JD. He said, Worth the price of admission? Hey, Ang, I know this isn't really a question, but I really want to share the fan experience at MT with the Ravens facing the Commanders this past weekend. Of course, being a Ravens fan from the DMV, this was a game that I had put top priority to go to this season. With the 0 2 start, I really wanted the team to flip the script and go on a win streak before I committed to buying a ticket, which they did. Hey, shout out to the Ravens. <laughs> they said, Hold up. We need Jay's money. All right, let's start winning these games. Let's start playing around with these boys. All right. Anyway, he said, uh, one thing that stuck out immediately was the level of fandom of this team. I primarily focus on the product on the field, but that day I really experienced a different side of being a Ravens fan. Every chant from the R-A-V-E-N-S, Ravens, to the not-so-team keep it clean chant was memorable. Oh, yeah, Ra Ravens fans don't play. If they love something, they'll let you know. If they hate something, they will let you know. 
Uh, he said, speaking more in the game itself, seeing Lamar and Jaden Daniels make plays on the field was worth the price of admission alone. I wasn't paying much attention to the box score that day, but to find out Lamar threw for over 300 yards on 75% com completion is kind of crazy considering that it didn't feel that way watching the game in person. Yeah, I, I agree with you. When you are at the games in person, it's, it's very hard to focus on like numbers and stuff like that, at least, at least for me. Um, any games that I'm at in person, you just, because you, you, you're so caught up in the game. You're so invested in the game that you don't even be – obviously, you, you look at the score, but you don't even be thinking about numbers and box score and stats and all that stuff. Uh, he said, uh, I was truly satisfied with the distribution of passes to Bateman and Flowers this game. They literally caught every pass thrown to them that day, and they gave me the utmost confidence moving forward to the latter half of the season. It was also good to see Manjus make an impact in this game. It literally felt like forever since we've seen that type of game from him. Well, it, it has been forever. That boy ain't been in the end zone him. <laughs> Years it seemed like He said lastly I can't forget to mention King Henry making a statement In this game And truly had the fans Going crazy all day long Historically the Ravens Have always thrived With a top tier running back With Ray Rice And Jamal Lewis Immediately coming to mind Oh yeah them Super Bowl champions huh? He said I think the team Currently constructed Will give every defense A problem come January And route to New Orleans But I wouldn't be a Raven fan without a little bit of pessimism. Something got to be said about the play of the secondary and linebackers. Oh, that's not pessimism. That's realism. That's being realistic and honest. Uh, he said, we got to start with these guys in the secondary dropping at least five interceptions in the past three games. What has inhibited our ability to run up the score on teams has really been turning the defense into offense. And dropping picks is a huge factor that we cannot overlook. Now, for the biggest problem of this team, it has been pass coverage in the intermediate parts of the field. The linebackers always seem to be a step behind in pass coverage, but excellent in stopping the run for some strange reason. Uh, one one thing that really bothered me is that Brandon Stevens is still struggling to turn and look for the ball. And I know teams with a wideout with some level of prestige seem to target him based on those tendencies. For now, I can't be too upset because the defense has done enough for the team to be 4-2 thus far. Let's continue to see dominant football all the way through January. Ooh, this was a really fun one. This is very different, too. Um, so, yeah, that was definitely, it's always definitely worth the price of admission when you go to a Ravens game. But, yeah, the defense, um, they have been struggling. Pass defense and run defense, they've been on point. But pass defense, they've been struggling. A lot of times they've just been close, but they just can't close. You talked about Brandon Stevens and struggling to just turn around and make a play on the ball sometimes. Um, there have been penalties. They have been giving up big plays, especially in the middle of the field. It's, it's just been a lot of different stuff. So they have the players. They got the players. They got the personnel. But they got a big thing is communication. Oh, communication is a big thing. <laughs> There was a play, and I remember seeing it live, and I remember talking about it during a live stream where Austin Eckler, uh, the commanders, Jaden Daniels in the shotgun, and Austin Eckler, he went to the left side of Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels motioned him over there, and Trent Simpson followed him. He followed him over to the, to the left side, and then he moved uh, Austin Eckler back to the right side, and Trent Simpson was pointing to him for somebody to pick him up. Jaden Daniels snapped the ball. Guess who the ball went to? Austin Eckler, and guess who picked him up? Nobody Ravens are struggling it, it's, it's schematic stuff man It's not the, They have the players that can get it done It's schematics man They They gotta fix that So Zach Orr Now Dean P is contributing Harwell gonna get in the mix a little bit They gotta fix the defense big time Next question came from our guy Robert He said what's up Engraven What's up Robert Just one quick question Do you remember when we drafted Devontae Walker LOL I just wonder if he's not playing Because he really is that bad Because he honestly hasn't gotten a chance To show what he can do I think his uh, biggest chance Came in Not even the preseason Well in the preseason But training camp Came in training camp And like I said earlier I, I just don't think they were impressed enough And we just ain't seen him since Next question came from my guy Steven He said what's going on Engraven What's up Steve he said, hope you and your family continue to stay healthy and safe, and thank you so much for all your hard work and great content. Now, I appreciate that, Steve. Thank you. He said, moving on to the question, do you think the Ravens will make a move before the trade deadline? If so, who are we most likely going after, in your opinion? Ah, these Baltimore Ravens. Um, I could see them. They got, they got a lot of pass rushes, and they just brought Yannick Ngakwe on the roster. Um, but I could still see them going after a pass rusher. Uh, because they are a team that really like they really want to invest in the defense like crazy and they do invest in the defense like crazy um and i feel like the baltimore Ravens they might look at the offense and be like ah we don't need nothing over there we're straight and, and the offense has been doing really good but for me i would just i would love to make it an even bigger powerhouse in my opinion because again like i've been saying I, I don't feel like with defense it's the players 
it, I feel like it's just a scheme. But anyway, um, I can see them going after somebody like like an edge guy, somebody like that, um, just to help with the pass rush even more. Like you said a lot of people are talking about improving our secondary, but do you, oh. I should have kept reading. My apologies. There's a lot of people talking about improving our secondary, but do you think we have a personnel issue or coaching issue? And thanks again. Ah, uh, yeah, you know my answer for that one. Next question came from the legit goat. He said, "Ain't It's been a while since I last sent in a question. I'm gonna keep it short. But after that game, do you believe this defense is heading in the right direction? Uh, I know a lot of fans feel differently, but we just held the number one scoring offense, who averages over 30 points a game, to barely getting over 20. Yes, there, there's still work to be done. Um, on this defense, a lot of work, but this game just proves to me that the defense can hold teams below their standard. Hmm. I didn't think about that. Uh, that's a, a nice positive to look at. Um, yeah. I, 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 hey, if those are the facts, those are the facts. That's And that's great. Um, they just got to fine-tune some stuff, man. Second half defense just got to get better. First half defense, usually pretty amazing, but second half is still the same thing. So... And again, it was Zach or this all this stuff is brand new to him. Yeah, we know now he's six games in. We we get that. So it ain't brand new, Brent, but it's still pretty new. So he's still making adjustments. He's still learning the game and whatnot. He's still learning how to be a defensive coordinator. So let's just see for see how it goes and hope for the best. We do appreciate the the fact that he did bring in Dean Pease to try to get some help and try to give him another set of eyes on the defense, though. He says Zach Orr has a second opinion now when it comes to the defense. And just like Zach Orr, Dean Pease has to learn these players in order for it all to work out. Just wanted to get your opinion on the defense this game. And do you feel like we should trade before the deadline for another corner or stick with the ones that we have and see it all work out at the end of the season? Because just like the Chiefs last year, it's not about how you start, but how you finish. And just like the Baltimore Ravens in the conference championship. Oh, wow. You're trying to hurt everybody. He said, just like the Baltimore Ravens in the conference championship. I'm out. Oof, that's rough right there. Um, but no, no, no. Now with that, that saying where, where people say it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. Nah, with football, it's about both. It's about both how you start and, and how you finish. So you want to finish even better than you start. And the Baltimore Ravens are certainly uh, seem to be headed in that direction. But, um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think they need to trade for a corner. I really don't. I know there's an article saying that um, the Ravens should consider trading for Emmanuel Forbes from the Commanders. Uh, and, hey, there's that, that potential upside and whatnot. I'm not sure Ravens could get them right, but w w I, I just – What's that going to do for the Ravens? I, I, I don't feel like he would do, really do anything for the Ravens right now. I, I mean, it'd be an extra piece and then a nice depth piece and whatnot with some starting experience. But I don't feel like he would be that turnaround for the Baltimore Ravens defense. Next question came from my guy Jalen. He said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, Jalen? Uh, before I ask my question, I just want to say uh, your live reactions to seeing, seeing Derrick Henry close out games have been hilarious. Trust me, I'm screaming and jumping the exact same way. That Derrick Henry do it to you, man. And him actually being a Baltimore Raven, especially just thinking back to last, because this was supposed to happen last year. They had everything set up, but the Titans shut it down at the last second. And it's like, we, we, we deserve this, man. We, we deserve even more elite players next to Lamar Jackson. We, we deserve just to, to be dominant like they've been dominant on offense. We, we, deserve, we deserve it. But anyway, uh, he said, my, my question is, after Aiden Hutchinson went down, I've seen different articles and talk show segments about how the Lions should go all out and trade for Max Crosby. I found myself asking, why not us? If I had to bet money, I would say the Ravens are more likely to try and trade for a, def uh, for a uh, star defensive player as opposed to a star wide receiver, and Max is elite. That, that statement right there, spot on. It's spot on. Whether anybody agrees with it or disagrees with it, that's what it is. That's the Baltimore Ravens. They will definitely go after the defense before the offense, especially when it comes to star players and whatnot. Anyway, he said, I know it will cost a lot of draft capital, but I believe with this offense we have, if we can get a defense even close to what we had last year, a Lombardi trophy is that much closer. Appreciate you and keep up the great work. No, I appreciate you, Jalen. Thank you. Hey, uh, Max Crosby, he will set it off, man. He, 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 he will set it off, man. Like, for a pass rush, call a pass rush, like, it ain't been the worst. It ain't been the best recently. It could use some more work, but... Yeah, the Max Crosby does that. You got Max Crosby, you just got Yannick, you know, Yannick and Gakwe. You got uh, a Dafe away. It's like, then the Dafe away, I don't know what happened. He started off so strong. He started off so dominant. Then he got quiet. I mean, what happened? Then with Kyle, Kyle Vinoy, he been like, he started off, well, he got poked in the eye and that messed him up for that first week. But then after that, he kept getting two sacks, two sacks, two sacks. And then he been kind of like up and down. Just, he just been close sometimes, but he ain't been quite there. So um, a Max Crosby, though, yeah, you had to give up a lot for a man, a lot. For a, a lot <laughs> For a Max Crosby You think Eric DeCosta Will be willing to give, give up Some first round picks To get him mm, I think Eric DeCosta He want to keep them First round picks Close to the chest 